live what's going on guys just waiting for everybody to get in here for this live and um it was so successful the week before last when we did this i wanted to do it again because so many people got so much out of it and i was super pumped so waiting for everybody to get the notification and get in here so just bear with me guys all right if this fan is making a noise on the microphone and it's annoying anybody please let me know If you can hear me, drop a heck yeah into the comments section. Okay. I see a few people coming in here now. How's it going, guys? Good to see you. Good to see you. Hey, Alyssa, who has just said hello. Um, Alyssa is um, one of our team members here at the Aspie World, um, and she will be taking questions uh, from anybody who needs help um, in the chat. So, um, yeah, so this is Alyssa um, here on over on YouTube. We'll be seeing uh, Alyssa talking to you guys. And also on Facebook, Steph will be taking any uh, questions you have and helping answer some queries and stuff. So where is everybody from? Let's 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 give it a go. Hey Daisy, oh, I see people coming in here now. Quinn, Nancy, Jen, Allison, how are you guys? Stuff good. Heck yeah. Okay, you guys can hear me. Okay, this is good. Um, uh, okay. All right then, guys, we're gonna get started right away because you guys are all here and it's super dope. So. This should work. Hey, it's working. <laughs> okay, so I have this. Uh, this basically this is like a um, a webinar presentation that I've wanted to do. Melissa, Ontario, nice. Uh, New York, love it. Mike, what's going on? Love it, love it, love it. Yeah. Ah, oh, USA, Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh. I've been to um, uh, Kutztown, Pennsylvania. That was kind of cool. So. Uh, so Steph is here as well on the Aspie World on Facebook, so you guys can see this. If you guys have any questions or anything, Steph is here to answer questions for you guys. So don't be afraid to ask Alyssa or um, Steph. These guys both work in for the Aspie World, and we're here to help you guys get all the information. Amazing. So guys, let's let's get started straight away. So this is um, some training and some, uh, I would say, uh, it, a, a training or a program that I kind of wanted to do with you guys. Nice, easy, fresh one, super kind of like to the point. It's kind of more for parents, but it's very, very um, uh, uh, relevant for anybody who is on the autism spectrum, uh, an adult on the spectrum. But this is kind of like stuff that I wanted to teach because I feel like there's so much um, that people, uh, you know, ask me on a daily basis. So, um, yeah, could you let her do something she loves? She, she loves right before and right after. I have no idea what you're saying, Lauren. <laughs> but um, we'll take some questions right at the end as well. I might be able to pull on the screen here, but right now we'll get started with the presentation because, um, yeah, this is the second one I'm doing. The first one was so successful. Everybody was like, this is so dope. We want to see it again. So, um, yeah, we're going to go through it again now. So this is um, a three oops, <laughs> this is three easy steps for you to create stronger understanding and accommodations for your autistic child without worry or anxiety. This is the ultimate guide to increasing your autism understanding. This is very exclusive. So this is me and my team put this stuff together and uh, very, very excited. Um, hey, from Egypt, that's awesome. All right, so. These are the three easy steps, right? Step one is how you solve anger issues within autism. Really big, um, big issue, anger and stuff. Um, and then step two is how to increase communication with your autistic child. Very interesting. Um, you know, we're always talking about communication and stuff like that. And there's different methods, but this is kind of like a, a really good um, uh, uh, tip, step, hack, tactic I'm teaching you guys today. And then step three is the top hack to a successful shopping trip you need. So this is very interesting. A lot of parents say to me like, oh my goodness, you know, go and shop for my autistic child. I mean, yeah, it's very stressful and I'm here to help uh, relieve some of that stress for you guys. So this is a, a little bit about me. So people who don't know who I am, maybe you just stumbled across this video, maybe you just jumped on the live because you're like, hey, this looks really interesting. So my name is Daniel Jones um, and my online pseudonym is The Aspie World. And this is kind of how I got started doing all this stuff. This is a, a lovely picture of me here when I was really young and I have all my action figures and toys in front of me, but I'm just lining them up because I like to do that. You know, like that's one of the things I like to do. And then there's me as a teenager with <laughs> sunglasses on and, and uh, headphones 
in my ears to kind of block out a lot of sensory noise and stuff like that because you know being an autistic adult i have a diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder i have adhd ocd and dyslexia i was undiagnosed for 26 years which is quite interesting so so i have like i was diagnosed at 26 which means i, I, st I stood back and i was like well I've, I've kind of got all of this um experience of, of struggling and, and finding my way through my life that i thought hey maybe i have something to offer people you know who I maybe lost on the feeling that I don't know, I don't know how to help my kid or whatever. You know, I've been through that. I'm an autistic person and an autistic adult going through those things. I thought it was really interesting to do. So, um, you know, I struggled pretty much all my life, like high school, primary school, uh, college, all this kind of stuff. And it was very, it was very difficult, very tough. You know, um, every single day going to school, I remember my mum taking me into school, and I was thinking, like, you know, it felt like it felt like hell. Um, and it was probably one of the worst times of my life because I was completely misunderstood and nobody really understood me. And it was very difficult, it was difficult to go to school. It was almost like, imagine being, you know, stripped naked and, and poured freezing cold water over you and then having to walk to like an auditorium full of people. It's just horrible, isn't it? So yeah, this is definitely interesting. But then I turned everything around. Um, I am a published author in three languages. I have a best-selling book internationally. I'm a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry, so I have a degree in chemistry. Um, I'm an entrepreneur, and um, I, I make educational content like this for you guys, which is really, really cool. And I get to help people like you every single day, and it is literally so fulfilling to me to help people directly. I love that. So um, I started on YouTube because I had a message. I wanted to put something out. Basically, this is what happened. I was diagnosed at 26 years old, and the guy who, who diagnosed me was basically like, um, there's a diagnosis, um, see you later. And I was like, oh, well, what do I do? And I, I knew nothing about autism, right? So I went online, and I typed in like autism or Asperger's syndrome as it was back then. And I, I looked and I looked, and there was nothing really on YouTube. And because I'm a very visual thinker, as most autistic people are, I was like, how am I supposed to learn anything if there's nothing visually representing anybody on the autism spectrum on YouTube? So I thought, you know, I'm going to put my own videos out and see if I can help people. And that's kind of how I got started. So I started posting content um, on YouTube. And um, yeah, this is kind of like a little bit of an overview of my journey. This is me <laughs> sitting down enjoying a bit of uh, virtual reality, which I absolutely love. I've been obsessed with virtual reality since I was, I don't know, five or six, since I could really, you know, cognitively understand what virtual reality was. I loved it. And uh, it all happened because I went to a museum in Birmingham in the United Kingdom, and, and I, I, was a, I used a very first virtual reality headset, and there was a drop of water going through a sink. It was fantastic. So, um, a lot of people may kind of understand how this journey was for me, you know. Um, I had, uh, you know, major issues. I felt lost, confused, very frustrated, didn't know where I fit in. You know, there was no information to help. Pretty much, like I said, I was going on YouTube and there was like no information to help. Nothing that was really relevant to me. Nothing that anybody said to me like, oh, yeah, I feel like that, you know. And it was very difficult. So I was constantly stressed, constantly worried. I felt like I was going insane some at some points, you know, and it was very interesting um, how... Uh, you know, it, it kind of like it makes you think when you when you get an autism diagnosis, you, all, all of the stuff that you, the, the predetermined ideas you have of yourself kind of just um, you know disappear, and then you you have this kind of new uh, label if you like. But then I knew nothing about it, so it was very diff difficult. But then it all kind of changed. Um, so I I sat back and I and I looked at myself, and I, and you know people have this this pessimistic chat, right? People always say this to me like, "Are you a glass half empty, glass half full kind of guy?" And I say, well, "Okay." I'm a guy who, regardless if my glass is half empty or half full, I'm really, really grateful and blessed and very lucky that I have a glass. So let's just be thankful for having a glass because some people have no glass. So I looked at this and I thought to myself, hey, I've gone 26 years, no help, no nothing. I managed to, you know, get all the way through school, just about. <laughs> I I managed to, you know, be somewhat successful as a, as a, as a person. So I thought, hey, maybe you know, maybe I can do this. Maybe I can help other people. Maybe I can help people understand, you know, how how the things that I learned through 26 years of struggle that I turned into kind of like a determination because I have a quite a determined attitude. I'm a dyslexic author, guys. Like, I literally have the worst handwriting. I can, I can barely read properly um, without proper prompting. Yet I've written a best-selling book in, in three languages, you know. So to me, it, it's kind of like, how do you, um, you know, how, how do you turn that into something good for people? And this is what I'm doing with you guys today. So this is the frameworks, right? 
So step one is how you solve anger issues. We're talking about fear, not anger, and then the comfort of the fear. And then this framework for step two for increasing communication is pairing and symbols and drawing, which is very interesting. And then step three is the top hack to a successful shopping trip, something that I call the shopping trip sandwich or the, 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 the sandwich technique. And then we have the diary of triggers. And I'm just going to literally just have a quick peek here. Anybody um, uh, just kind of... Uh, I'm going to see if there's anybody in here. Okay, guys, so you are you interested in learning more? Are you guys enjoying it so far? I just want to see how you're all doing. How you? I see the team are hard at work in here. Um, Liam, thank you so much. Download your content when I was totally awesome. What you get I was diagnosed eight years ago and still starting to be myself. Liam, you come to the right place, though, because I was feeling just like you, and it, it's really nice to, um, to connect with people like you because I was there, you know? So it's really nice. It's really, really good. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, it's really awesome. Okay, guys, good. Yay, hello, Andrew. How's it going? Good. Okay, guys, let's get back to the. Uh, let's get back to it. So, all right. So let me get to my notes here. Let's go for the first one. So, how you solve anger issues with autism, right? So, this framework basically eliminating anger in autism. Now, a lot of people don't know, and this is what a lot of people don't know. So, this is me angry as heck, <laughs> which is like default. And it's really funny. Like, so my girlfriend for many years would be thinking that I was super angry. Like I was super angry. Like, uh, don't you have a short temper and you're really angry and stuff. And you know, what's really funny is I kind of like, um, I, I don't, I, I'm very, I'm a very calm person, very placid person. But for some reason I have like this bizarre like random short temperness which is like you know i get aggressively angry like oh my goodness like this has happened and blah 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 and one of the things uh, which was really interesting to me is is i really felt like i didn't have anger issues but my behavior was showing that i did have anger issues and and i, I this is conflicting in my head and so for instance you know we were rearranging the furniture and the carpet in the living room and um uh oh hey through rain no worries cherries uh yeah, good to good to see you here, Flavia. How's it going? Good to have you here. And um, yeah, I I kind of like was moving the carpet, and I was trying to roll down the, the carpet, and I was just about to finish the last piece. And I like to complete things, right? But my girlfriend just kind of walked past and you know flattened the carpet down for me. Oh man, it it was as if somebody just punched me in the face, and it, and it was just it was just enraged, kind of like, Rah! and I was like, how 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 am I getting so angry over something so trivial? Um, and because of the way the 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 brain of an autistic person, the phenotype of an autistic person kind of it works is that, and I learned this recently, basically it, it's it's triggering on fear rather than uh, the, the moment at hand. And so what, what what's happening is uh, when I had my updated diagnosis, because I had I was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, but then obviously that's kind of like they don't use that term as much anymore. So it was actually, I went for an updated diagnosis and with autism spectrum disorder level one. And basically, yeah, you today, cherries yeah man like you see that's the thing um and so basically they said oh you suffer from an extreme um overwhelming amount of fear and when they said that it was almost profound because it was like somebody holding up bits of a mirror and showing me myself and thinking like oh my goodness yeah it's it's not anger it's fear and how do i explain this to somebody it's very simple let me explain it to you it's kind of like if you know at certain times nearly my, my partner she looks at me and she says you know, why are you so angry? Why are you so stressed? And I'm like, dude, like, she's like, there's no need to be stressed. Everything's absolutely fine. <laughs> and it's kind of like, from my point of view, is like, imagine we're running through a battlefield, like, and we're carrying all, all heavy artillery and people are firing shells at us and we're like poof, dodging bullets and stuff. We're in the middle of a war zone, right? And then you look at me and go like, dude, why are you stressed? I'm like, are you insane? Like, this is like a horrible feeling. We're running for our lives. And that's what it feels like. It feels like Every day, I'm, I'm fearful of things, and, and one of the things I used to used to imagine when I was a kid was I used to think, "Oh, when I'm 18, I won't be worried anymore. You know, I I'll be a, I'll be a man, I'll be an adult, and that fear will go away." And fear never went away. And so now I go, "Well, how do I address that fear? How do I how do I overcome that um, to, to to make it kind of more more substantial?" And so that's, that's kind of what's going on here. You know, autistic children, autistic people are not angry they're not angry people they're fearful people who are triggering out of fight or flight mode you know if you're if you're faced with like a saber-toothed tiger and you're like australopithecus or neanderthal or you know our old, old hominid species we'd be like throwing spears and like bah, 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 like screaming at these things to go away because we'd be we'd be full of this kind of fear right we wouldn't be full of anger we'd be full of fear so it's very interesting that um that i knew this so 
that's how I knew it was key. Now, how do you eliminate anger? Well, anger comes from the fact that you are always triggered. So let me let me let me go back to the screen so I can see you guys probably not. So uh, so if you're always like if you're always triggered, if you're always up here, like here is calm, but you're always like kind of like like building up this fear, building up this fear, building up, and then something goes wrong. Wow, you're always at tipping point. You're always ready to just execute. But what you need to do is is kind of be at about a, a stable calm level, so that if things do go up, whoa, you can come back down quite easy. So the idea is that we need to implement calmness into our lives in the form of maybe sensory breaks. Maybe it's a form of, um, you know, taking a, like one hour a day is taking yourself away from everything, sitting in complete silence and reading a book or listening to a book or exercising for an hour a day, moving yourself out of the situation that you surround yourself in with 24 seven and creating a new pattern in your life to introduce calm. One of the things we do is we promote as humans, as people, as adults, as parents, we promote demands on ourselves to do things. Go to the washing, go to the shopping, you know, go get the kids ready for school, go to get, you know, go to get the lunches done, I gotta come home, go do my makeup, gonna have a shot. All these things demands, right? And there's this thing called the spoon theory where you only have enough spoons, you know, you have a limited or a finite number of spoons that you can use on things. So one spoon is to do the shower, then a spoon is to do breakfast with the kids. And then by like midday, you may only have two spoons left and you have to do five things you know, it's not going to work. You only have two spoons available. So you're still three over the top. And so what we need to do in our lives is, is promote the fact that we really want to, um, introduce calmness. And so that, that, that's, that's one way. Another way is, and this is what I found really, really interesting as well, is the, the person who, the, the non-autistic person who's with you, right? So it could be the mum or dad or parent or whatever. Okay. If they understand the situation, they validate the situation. They say, look, I get it. You know, you're not angry, you're fearful. And that's cool. It, it, dis it disseminates a, an idea in your head that like you, because the thing that happens for an autistic person, that's what it's like. When an autistic person goes rages and they think, oh my goodness, you know, I'm going, you know, I'm going crazy. And I'm, I'm, they, they feel bad. And then the situation feels worse because then everyone else is angry at them for them having this like anger issue, this anger outburst, right? And I know it. I talk to people all the time about the same and they feel like that. But but if 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 the if their significant other or their mother or their partner or whatever just said, hey, it's absolutely fine. I get it. I get it. Like, it's absolutely valid. You you, you kind of like it halves that issue, right? You you're you're just battling the anger issue. You're not battling the 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 repercussions from the anger issue. You're just battling the anger issue. And so what I do is, if I'm in the middle of something and I'm getting close to century of Lord, I'm getting close to one of these anger peaks. I I, I kind of go upstairs away from everybody. I take five minutes and I breathe and I just calm down. I tell myself that I'm safe. I tell myself that I'm I'm like just completely surrounded by the things that I own, things that I love, everything's fine. And this is what you do with your child. You take them out of the situation, you tell them it's fine, we breathe and everything's okay. This starts to eliminate anger and it's playing the long game. You know, nothing was ever, you know, nothing's ever a short fix, right? When I mean, people are obsessed with short fixes, but nothing's ever a short fix. You can't, you can't just fix something, you know, it just doesn't happen, right? What happens if you go to like, um, you know, get your car fixed, you know, something seriously wrong with your car, you know, you, you, it would be in the shop for a few days, you know, you can go there and get them to do it in half an hour because it would be ridiculous and we can fix it, right? So um, it, it's 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 how, how it works. <laughs> it was that Cherry says she has to go downstairs. That's cool. Um, but yeah, so that's how we that's how we start to eliminate anger, and it's playing that long game. It's it's introducing this framework all the time. It's 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 knowing those key factors, even even knowing that that person isn't you know isn't acting out of anger, that acting out of fight or flight mode, will will uh, really calm that situation down. But implementing calmness through the day. So here's a here's um, a lovely uh, message from somebody who um, who's taken on some of my teachings and some of my coaching and stuff, and and. Then some of my programs and said, Dan, I reached out to you a few years ago when the son was diagnosed and, and basically I've been a light uh, that got them through understanding him and making his world more neurodiverse and, and better suited to him. And then he says, basically, he's currently in the best space of his life, surrounded by people uh, who, who love and accept him and is thriving. And they watch hours of my videos, learning and stuff. This is just amazing. Um, and this person said that I'm literally changing people's lives. And thank you. This is the reason I get up in the morning and do what I do, guys. I absolutely love um, hearing from people who are using some of the, the methods that I'm teaching, some of the programs that I'm teaching and, and the content that me and my team put out. Honestly, my goal, I, I wake up every day thinking, how can I better help people with the content that I'm doing? Like that, to me, that's, that's everything. So, um, yeah, I, I love that. It's really, really cool. 
So I am going to move on to the next one now. So let's let's do that. So increasing communication with your autistic child. Um, so this framework um, is, is is basically pairing uh, the parent. And so um, I'll tell you how I how I came to this. I was working with a client because um, basically what happens is parents are are quite um, uh, up in the in the hustle of hustle of life. You know, if you got to think about it, if you're a parent with an autistic child, right, or you're or whatever, you're 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 busy getting food ready. You're you know you're busy being a mum. You know you're busy being a, or a dad, and you're busy kind of being a human. You know, like showering and putting makeup on, or getting stuff ready, getting dressed, and eating yourself, taking care of yourself. Super important. And then you have to take care of your children, and children are difficult as it is. You know, and that's that's a beauty of life. That's the roller coaster of having children. But then, when you have a, a, a kid with um, unexpected needs like autism, then there's another layer of things you get to. So it's not always easy to get to the level of understanding with your kid where you really vibe with them, and it's difficult. And I know that because parents tell me all the time it's difficult, and and I get it. It's not, and there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that. It's not like you're a bad person. It just means that you may have not come across something that has worked for you. You know, I know loads of people have probably watched hundreds of webinars and stuff and tried stuff before, and it's failed. But it's not their fault. It's the people who've been teaching them's fault. Um, and so. Basically, I was um, coaching a, a doctor, uh, Dr. Ali, who runs a, um, a clinic for therapy with children on the autism spectrum. So she used to do these weekly therapies with them. She got, you know, they come to her, her, th her clinic and they do these therapy things and they talk through stuff and kind of cool, right? Ali said to me, she had this big issue, middle of lockdown, everything's remote learning, right? And she'll see sitting on Zoom with these kids. Autistic kids sitting on Zoom for an hour, forget it, dude. Like autism normally comes with ADHD as well. And you, no, I mean like two, three minutes, maybe an hour, forget it. Like how, how this is never going to work. She said, Dan, what am I supposed to do? I said, Ali, it's fine. We're going to fix it. <laughs> and what we did was this, this is exactly what we did. I said to her, do they play Minecraft? She said, of course they play Minecraft. Every single one of these kids play Minecraft or Roblox, right? I said, Ali, you need to make a Minecraft account. You need to conduct your sessions within Minecraft and talk to them as you build, co-build in Minecraft, do the game with them, but talk to them. She came back to me a week later and said, Dan, there's a video testimony on my website about this. She said, Dan, this is the, the most profound thing that's ever happened. I've had the best sessions of my entire career with these kids by doing it in Minecraft. I said, the reason that's happening is because the, the children are, are occupied with something, right? And, and that's taking up their, their focus, right? And you're coming in and asking for a demand up here and it's never going to happen because the kids down here you're up here just bleh. if you get down to the kids level and start kind of coexisting on their level of what they're vibing with you can communicate because communication is literally this you're sending particles from one area of space to another area of space and having that reciprocated but if you're in two areas of space that are <laughs> that, that are not anywhere near each other you're, you're not going to make a, a collection or connection or a linear advantage so I said to her, get to that level, pairing, and, and do it. So how would this work in, in, a, in a more practical sense with, with a parent, right? So what I say to parents is that basically if your kid, like you're, you're trying to get your kids to do something, right? You want you want your kid to go to um, uh, the, I don't know, the shower or, or pick up their clothes or, or tidy their toys or tidy their stuff, right? And you go in there and your kid's playing with Lego or your kid's playing on the Xbox or whatever. So pick up a controller, sit next to them, get involved with what they are doing as in that moment, get involved with what they're doing. Say to them like, oh, I get it. Yeah, yeah, you're um you're playing Roblox or whatever. What what are you doing in Roblox? Get them to communicate with something that they're very comfortable in. And once you've communicated with them very comfortably, then you could say to them, Hey, I was thinking, are you able to kind of like just help me pick up some of the stuff in the room? And they say, Yeah, you know, after I finished doing this, that's fine. And you say, Okay, cool. So we're doing this now. And then next we're gonna we're gonna pick up stuff in the room. And and all you've done is is you've gotten to their level. You you've given them valid acceptance that you understand where they are and what they're doing and that it's completely fine and they are exactly where they need to be and then then they can they can follow through with that and that is to me absolutely uh, uh fantastic and the thing about this is um a lot of people say well what if i you know what if they're not um they're not playing a game or they're not doing something, blah, blah, blah. I say to them, you know, a lot of people on the autism spectrum have issues with um, command. If someone says, if someone comes in, like my girlfriend does all the time, she comes in, she's like, hey, I need you to go to the kitchen. I need you to pick up this, 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 and this. And I go into the kitchen, I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, I, I, it was the point was me going to the kitchen because I'm going to come back with like a block of cheese or something. It'd be completely irrelevant to what she wanted, right? So I was saying like, well, if you wrote this down in pictures for me, 
I'd get it, you know? So she'll text me like a bunch of emojis and then I'll go and do that, right? So if you're trying to communicate with your kid in a way where you want them to get it, try visual imagery because visual images resonate more with visual thinkers and people on the autism spectrum are usually visual thinkers, right? Or kinesthetic kind of learners as well. So if you can, if you can implement a, a small imagery, a graphic imagery like emojis into things, you, you'll you'll fly, you'll fly. So you can you can create lists and stuff with 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 graphics, and, and it'll be absolutely fantastic. So, um, again, here's a uh, another couple of happy parents who have been helping. You know, Judy, this has been wonderfully explained. Um, she wished she had this information years ago for herself and her children. And thanks, Dan. You know, you've been a huge help. Amazing, love it. Thank you so much, Judy. Bless bless us all. Um, and then this one, I am Susie. Um, thank you for helping me learn how to be helpful and understand my three-year-old granddaughter, you know, like just stuff like that. Like I, I so appreciate these people. That's why I'm highlighting these people because they're just, these, these things are like so motivating for me. Okay. So the last tip, but this is something else. I'm going to come back to the, going to go back to the screen for a second. Hope you guys are all enjoying this so far and you're getting a lot out of this. You guys are amazing. And, um, I just want to say that basically, um, I have something really interesting to talk about right at the end. So, um, so yeah, so don't disappear before the end. I've got something very, very interesting to talk to you about. So, um, if you're loving all this, you're going to, you're going to freak with the stuff at the end. So, um, these are, uh, this is like basically my top hat to, to shopping uh, trip. And, um, this, this framework, I basically call it the unthrowable event because well, look, we've all been there. Let's, let's, let's go back to, let's go back to like, you know, you're a parent and you want to go to the grocery store with your kid and they're on the autism spectrum. <laughs> I mean, how many parents have enjoyed going to the store with their kids on the autism spectrum? I can guarantee, mum, you know, don't worry about it. It's fine. I get it. You know, it's not your fault. It, it's and, and the reason it's difficult is because what you're doing is you're, you're taking your autistic child from a sensory pleasing environment, their home, their safe space, their, their, their cocoon, and you're, you're dropping them into a sensory hell, the grocery store, lights, sounds, smells, people, um, temperatures, uh, motion from the, the carts. Oh, it's, the, it's a, it's an absolute nightmare. This disturbance, um, between those two, two events throws the whole event. I mean, you just, it's never going to be successful. Not to mention your kids like running off, doing something and it's, it's crazy, right? So I, um, I decided that I would I would help people with this by creating a uh, the unthrowable event, and, and I'll tell you how it happened. Um, basically, um, I basically okay before going, I, I I can't stand going anywhere, right? I really can't stand going anywhere. So I was like really trying to like psych myself up to go places. And now if I have to go to the grocery store, if I have to go to like an event, like a birthday party. I had like two birthday parties this weekend, honestly. But, how do I do it is I psych myself up. So what I do is I sit down because I know I'm going at like saying going at 10 o'clock. So for an hour, an hour before, so at nine o'clock, I start watching a documentary of something I really enjoy, like aliens or UFOs or something crazy. Right. And I like really get into it and I love it. And I know that I'm going to watch this again when I come back home. So then we go and do the thing and I struggle through it and I get it, I get it. Then I come home and then I'm like, ha, ah, now I can watch my thing again. And what this tends to do is it implements in my mind that I've, I've gone from something that I really enjoy to something that I really don't like, but then I'm going to come back to something I really enjoy. So at the end of the day, you know, two out of three ain't bad, right? And so it's all about kind of programming yourself to understand those things, especially for parents. So what I would say, this is what I say to parents. I say, right, before you go to the store, get your kid to do their favorite thing. If it's like spinning wheels, you know, stimming with toothbrushes, you know, you know, I'm looking at you, mom, you know, you know, the whole thing like that, whatever they really want to do, the thing that they love doing, get them to do that. Get them to do that for a bit. And then you say to them, we're doing this now. And next we're going to the store. But when we're in the store, we're going to come home and do that again. So what happens is you take them out of that, you take them to the store. But when you're in the store, you say, right, we're going to go from here back home to do the thing you were doing before, right? So say it's playing Minecraft, like you're in the store and you say like, we're in the store right now, but then we're going to go home and play Minecraft. And so this now, that next, this will start to create a, a program in their head that they think, okay, I get it. You know, really good, enjoyable stuff, a little bit of discomfort back to really enjoyable stuff. So you sandwich the negativity between two positive experiences and this will start reinforcing a positive experience in their mind. Again, it's not like you're going to do it once and it's going to be fixed. This is a, you're playing the long game, right? Nothing ever gets short-term fixed. 
ne never. We all know that. You know, you, if it's like, I'm going to lose like six stone in two days, like it's never going to happen. Like, you know, you know, anybody who's like working out, you know, it's, it's a long game. Like anything else, it's a long game. Uh, there are no, there are no, um, you know, trip, like instant hacks to do anything. And this is one of those, right? So um, this is basically going to make your, your shopping trips and events easier. But one thing that I would like to add into this is that take a notepad with you and start making a note of things um, that trigger you. Like I used to go to the grocery store and every time I come, I'd be like super stressed coming back from the grocery store. I'm like, what is it? Not only, yeah, okay, I know gro grocery stores are gross for all the things I mentioned. There's something in particular that was really triggering me and triggering me to almost have a meltdown. And I was like, what is it? What is this thing? And so when I went to the grocery store, as soon as I, I, I felt like, ooh. I was like, oh, it's that. It's the deli counter of all the horrible cold meats and cold slaughter and like hummus and stuff. It's like the pong was just coming over to me. I'm like, oh God. So like I couldn't, it was too, too sensory overloading for me. So I'm really, really sensitive to raw onion and raw garlic. And so those things were on offer in the deli counter. And so I avoided that side of the shop. So if you're a parent and you're and you want to take your kids somewhere successfully, make a, a list of when they're feeling uncomfortable of all the things that could be stimulating them at that time and know that you can avoid those. Kind of like when I realized that, you know, going to the department store to buy like just normal stuff, like tech stuff or clothes, right? Which is like super overwhelming for me. I just went on like Amazon or whatever, or ASOS and just ordered stuff on an app. There you go, I've eliminated the struggle and, and I still get the same result, easy peasy. So it's, it's about, like writing your triggers down and under, understanding those triggers. All righty, Rue, some more kind of uh, uh, feedback here. So your video is really insightful. As a parent with two kids and a VDC, one is on the spectrum. Bottom, and the other one was at one point away from being on the other spectrum. It gives me a uh, look through the window and scenarios to set their experience, which is really interesting. I love that. And uh, Nadine here, uh, I always enjoy videos and my daughter was diagnosed, awesome level one, and nobody is really working with us as of yet. So your life hacks work wonders for her. Thank you so much. And see that, oh, I love stuff like that. I love stuff like that. So, so far, I'm just going to do a little, little, little recap. So we've, um, you know, talked about anger issues. Uh, we talked about increasing communication and we looked at the successful shopping trip hack, right guys? So I have a question, okay? And this is a question. I need I need audience participation in this part, please. I'm going to be like a <laughs> one of those magicians. Right, and my lovely assistant will come up here, and we're going to pick an audience member to tell me something, and I'm going to throw a knife at. No, I'm joking. That actually did happen once. I was in the circus, and they took my dad out of the, the, the seats and put him on this, like, thing, and then they put balloons all around him, and then the guy blindfolded himself and picked up a lot of knives and threw the knives at the balloons around my father whilst spinning at my father. And honestly, it was the craziest thing I've ever seen Luckily, my father was not hit by any of these knives. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a true story. Okay, back to the back to the slides. Okay, so my question is this: with all the information that you've just learned today, right, the stuff I just showed you now, what would be the easiest route? Would you take all the information you know and like try and make sense of everything else around it, and try and go on your own? Probably never, never come to that the the su succession or the conclusion that you need or maybe you're kind of be wandering around in the dark forever and spending loads of money and time or would you rather have a coach a guru a guide somebody who's going to take your hand and guide you through the whole thing and say hey this is how you do it um and you know this is this is the way forward so you you, you quit out the time and the energy and all that money you would have probably spent in the years just to get the, the right answers right um which one would you do which you know what's easier number one or number two i want to know i want to see a show put a number one or number two in the box i see you guys you're all here i see it i see it let me know number one or number two i'm just gonna take a quick drink right coach right number two that's less stress yeah exactly you need less this is the comment of the century a coach because i need less stress not more and laurie henry you're absolutely right you know when you're when you're having to go through yeah number two number two number two see all these number twos coming in. when you when you're when you're and that's kind of how i feel a lot of parents on your inspection uh are, are, are kind of kind of feeling a bit lost here because they're going around in circles they're finding bits of information we need someone to like really go there and, and go okay this is how um uh, this is how you do it and this is the quickest way to do it you know in in the most efficient form so if it's okay with you guys um 
<laughs> let me show you this picture first. Look, this is what I just showed you guys, probably about one of these little boxes of information here, but I've got all of this information to share with you. Now, I couldn't possibly do it in this one teeny tiny webinar like this guy's car, right? This. Um, actually, there's a guy that delivers pizzas in my in my neighborhood, and, and this is what the pizza delivery car looks like. Not with all the boxes, just the actual car. But yeah, this is what it, this is like a this is a visual representation of all the information I want to share with you guys, but it doesn't all fit into this one webinar. So if it's okay with you guys. Is it okay if I, I take like maybe five minutes or 10 minutes just to kind of explain something that I've, I've, I've created for you guys? Do you want to know? Do, do you do y'all do do want to know? Let me know in the comments. I'm really psyched. I'm going to take a drink. Will you let me know if you, if you are happy for me to just spend five to 10 minutes just showing you uh, something that I got to offer you guys uh, that's super, super awesome, super exclusive just for you because you're here and I love you. Um, <laughs> that's a good comment actually i'm still confused the therapist does, doesn't know uh, therapist typically like uh, making time is hard see that's another thing and this is this is the thing so stacy this is a good comment yes please of course guys i'm gonna get into it right now so i want to want to just highlight this comment making time is hard taking time harder right because i had this issue where i wanted to i wanted to learn stuff about youtube and, and making videos online and then i wanted to also um work out I only had a certain amount of time in a day. So I was like, okay, well, do I work out or do I learn stuff? But then I was like, hey, I could do both. I could like listen to books whilst I run, right? So there's always a way around things. We just have to find a coach and 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 have that um yeah, and, and have that what you know input from from a coach. Okay, guys, let's go through it. Right. <laughs> that was a terrible trumpet. The Autism Acceleration Academy. This is something that my team and I have been working on for like literally a year, like like seriously a year. It's crazy. And we've come up with this thing called the Autism Acceleration Academy. And I'm so pumped to talk to you guys about it. Are you, are you excited? I'm really excited. Like, like super excited, guys. Okay, so... <clears throat> so the Autism Acceleration Academy, basically it's an online program where you can access it from your phone, tablet, computer, laptop, whatever you want, right? Whenever you want. And it's a fully designated program that takes you literally from A to B with everything autism related. If you're a parent or if you're someone who's just on the autism spectrum wants to learn more for yourself. But this is kind of like, it goes through everything. And I'm going to share every single piece of this with you guys right now. So I'm going to I'm gonna show you guys something really interesting. I'm going to stack, I'm going to show you the value, like the, it, the worth of the information. This is not what it's priced at. Obviously, I don't, I don't sell it for this. But I'm going to show you what, what it's valued at. So I do a lot of teaching and coaching in different types of uh, scenarios for um you know, uh, education establishments or the police or schools and stuff like that. And so, it so the first the first module. So there's this uh, six modules within this uh, program. So the first module is managing sensory needs, reducing emotional um, dysregulation. So the value would be four hundred and fifty dollars if if you were to buy this just as one course, right? Which is what I'd sell it to the schools for or the government or whatever. Um, and it would just it just be four hundred fifty dollars, right? So the second class is um, recognizing moods, emotions, reducing anxiety. A huge, huge, huge one, huge one. Again, four hundred and fifty dollars for this one. You know, if you're if you're an education establishment body, this is why this is what they pay per head. For, for, for this one class, but this is not what I'm, what I'm selling for. I'm just, I'm just going to show you guys because actually I've got very, something very special to talk to you guys about. Um, the third class here is uh, uh, live independently, uh, uh, living independently, and also including hygiene. So a lot of autistic people struggle with hygiene and and, and understanding the hygiene and, and how do you educate someone on hygiene. So especially if you, you're a parent of children on the spectrum, how do you educate them on hygiene? So we cover all of that in this class. Again, it's got a value of $450, but that's totally not, I mean, Honestly, that's nothing like what, what, what I actually sell for. Okay. And then uh, the, the fourth one here, socializing, school and relationships, really big one, especially for like, you know, relationships is a huge one, but it also in school, a lot of children in, on the autism spectrum, difficult to, uh, to actually um, uh, make friends in school, socialize in school, all those things. Again, look at the value of this. I mean, we're, this is already stacking up as like really, really, you know, a, there's a value proposition here. And so let's scroll down. We're looking at the uh, the fifth one here, teaching you effective communication. This is super important because autism is a communication disorder at the end of the day. So you really want to be able to know, you know, hey, can I can I do stuff more effectively? You know, can I communicate better? Again, this class want to sell it, just the class. Um, yeah, it, see, this is, this, this is it, you know. Hygiene can be an issue as an adult as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And I have covered it all in this class. Me and my team, have, we, we literally spent 
like a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of resources basically preparing this. I spent 26 years of my life putting all this information um, into into this course uh, and this program. And so the 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 final here now is teaching you self advocacy and future proofing because a lot of people think like you know what does the future of an autistic person look like? How are they going to manage themselves in the world? How are they going to you know? live out their life if you're a parent and you, you know you're a parent of an autistic kid you're thinking well i'm when i'm dead and gone how are they gonna you know how's their future looking you know and, and it's all about that it's about making sure that you know how to prepare for that future and again you know if we were to value just that one class that's 450 dollars again so if we look at the overview here this is a total value it's not what it's priced at this is a total value of two thousand seven hundred dollars just for the just for these courses right now i actually have a question right if if the only thing this course did, like say, okay, say that you had, um, say I came to you and said, look, I can get you to reduce anxiety and regulate, uh, recognize moods and emotions in your autistic child um, or or in yourself, right? Would you pay $2,700 to have this relief, right? For reducing anxiety or understanding, uh, managing sensory needs, or even if it was just teaching yourself effective communication, right? If it was just $2,700, would it be worth it? Well, you know, I'm not going to answer that for you. You know the answer, right? And so, yeah, exactly. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Relationships can be hard. Hygiene. Yeah. See, you guys, you guys get it. I absolutely. Yeah. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys. I'm really, really prepared to show you guys the uh, the actual price of this program because this program is very exclusive, and there's only a limited amount of people that's actually in this program right now. So let's go down this entire course is only 297 dollars right but wait there's more so this program everything i just showed you then valued at over two thousand seven hundred dollars actually is only 297 dollars but uh, but bear with me guys there's more if you are wanting to get on this program right now because you're on the live with me right now i'm actually going to check in uh, workforce sheets now next cards daily charts and downloads and stuff like that we're also putting in a support for school handbook like a pdf uh, access to the triple a which is the awesome inspiration academy uh, group so you can have there'll be monthly live chats with me in there so you can ask me questions directly uh, the sensory handbook creating sensory environments um, and creating sensory bliss basically relaxing music for mums who definitely need to relax this is a big one right people just need to relax so uh parents evening quiz sheets so if you've got children on the spectrum and you don't know what to ask on a parents evening when you're meeting with the teachers um uh, create a habit guide and there's some extra resource bundle pdfs in here as well you get all of this stuff and the course this is basically an overview of everything that you get in it look at all this stuff this is super super awesome right all of this stuff literally only $297. Now you can purchase this if by going to theaspeworld.com forward slash triple A, or you can click the link in the description uh, of this video, uh, this live video right now, and just check it out. Look, this is the program right here, right? You got all of this stuff, managing sensory needs, recognizing moods and emotions, reducing anxiety, living independently, including hygiene, socializing for school relationships, teaching yourself faculty communication, teaching yourself self-advocacy and future proofing. And then you got all these bonuses as well. And how it works guys is you, um, you have uh when you when you buy the when you buy the program um you can access it anytime you want and you you get access to a list of different videos and different resources and you access them anytime you want from your mobile device or whatever you literally just save the page it's like a it's like a download that you just download absolutely amazing this is i'm so pumped anybody got any questions about the program or anything like that um one thing i will say to you guys though is that we do have a payment plan uh, option so if you if you're thinking like oh, 297 dollars is like super like oh, i don't know you know i can't really push that out but you could do like 69 dollars over five months then go for it you know there's there's a payment plan option as well so you can sign up for a payment plan um super interesting uh because we 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 uh, wanted to make it accessible for everybody because you know that's what we're trying to do here. We're, we're just trying to basically make um, everything accessible. So you can get this right now. But this this deal is only for the next twenty four hours. I demoed this. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. So if you go to the the aspieworld.com forward slash triple um, I'm going to show you guys. Let me let me try and let me try and show you guys what it what it looks like, just so that you guys have a. Um, Oh God! One more. <laughs> Where's my thing? Okay, let me change the uh, let me change the screen here for a second, um, and uh, I'm just gonna um, there we go. Back to me. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna just uh, share uh, a new window with you guys. Um, okay, so where are you guys now? Okay, so if I 
<laughs> so this is this is what it looks like on the actual the website. So you can buy the whole thing now for two nine seven, or you can just do five installments of sixty nine dollars, right? So you still get access to everything um, straight away. Um, and at the end of the day, um, you know, if if we're, if within thirty days you're not getting any value from this, you can just get your money back. So don't worry about that. You know, there's no risk involved. Absolutely no risk. The risk is all on me. Um, and uh, I know that the proof's in the pudding. And this thing is is amazing. Uh, and the amount of um, the amount of people who benefited from this program is just ridiculous. So, um, like I said, it's super. Um, it's super novel. It's only around. It's only we've only literally just completed it like two weeks ago with the first time we ever did this program. And so um, I'm very excited uh, to, to actually share this with you guys. And at the end of the day, it is, this is super, super interesting uh, and super, super exclusive for you guys. 24 hours, the clock is ticking. If you uh, want to get in, like I said, you get to go on it right now. And uh, yeah, you can sign up right now. I have instant access. There's no waiting. There's no there's no nothing. You can just ac actually access it straight away. Guys, do you have any comments, any questions um, about this? Let me know and uh, we'll answer them. Me and my team are on here now for the next five minutes uh, before you guys have the next 24 hours to go and absolutely smash that um that offer uh, just for you guys all righty Roo. okay i would love uh, hold on where i would love to but we're we're looking we look oh, less than 900 dollars a month i get it jen i get it and, and times are hard i get it i get it but like i said you, you've seen the value of what i'm doing um yeah and uh it would be great if something ex similar existed for 16 plus. Sorry, Andrew, could you rephrase that question? Could, is that a question? I'm not entirely sure. Thanks. Good info. Thanks, D. I'm just going to take a drink of my, uh, my water here again. Hey, do you remember being an extra for pitching in like three years ago? I wasn't. I was. I was on the bus with you, and it was a great meeting. Oh my goodness! I absolutely do. I was in a. Um... <laughs> yeah, it was like three years ago. I was on a TV show, um, and uh, I met this guy. How cool is that? Yeah, I do remember that. I do remember that. Yeah, it was really, really good. I watched it as well. It's the only time I watch television is to watch myself on TV. It was good. Yeah. Um, I did. So somebody just asked, actually, if I've got um, loop earplugs, the noise cancelling loop earplugs video. I do have a video on them, but um, it's on um, it's on TikTok and Instagram. It's not. Uh, it was like an Instagram video. It's not a. It's not a YouTube video. In oh, in development of independence. I thought it might help some of my students, age sixteen plus. Oh, one hundred percent, Andrew. Actually, I I just want to kind of highlight this. Um, this part, this section of the of the course, this here, teaching you self advocacy and future proofing, um, definitely, um, uh, yeah, definitely available. Uh, this is this is so useful for um, for for kids uh, over sixteen. Um, relationships and socializing. This is really interesting. Living independently as well. This is not just about hygiene. This is living independently, like everything to do with it. So this module here as well. I mean, just that's the thing. Like if you if you were to just find a course on living independently, like this one here, it'd be way higher than $297, right? So I'm giving you everything uh, all in this bundle for that uh, exclusive price here. Um, thank you, Steph. I was like, okay. Hi, would it be a good way to ask you how to get tested. Hi, what would be a good way to ask your partner to get tested? Um, be honest, truthful, and and upfront. I guess I I don't I don't see like, um, you know I don't I don't see any other way. You know you, the only thing you can't improve upon is the truth at the end of the day. So, yeah, get get on that. So, guys, any more questions about the program, the course, anything like that before we let you go and, and sweat over the next twenty four hours before purchasing this thing? Um, let me know any questions my team and i are you know we're on we're on the socials we'll be able to answer any questions um you guys are amazing and i'm uh, 
I'm blessed to have you all here. So I'm gonna gonna give it five minutes just so I can see if any questions come in. It's a little bit delayed on my side when you answer, when you ask a question or you type something in. It's a little bit delayed, but it's okay. Dan reminds me of an intelli int intelligent dugong. What? What creepy lobster? Not entirely sure what that means. What is this? What is a dugong? Am I just am I start the loop? Is this a Gen Z thing? It is, isn't it? I bet it's a Gen Z thing, and I'm well out of the loop. I bet it is. Damn it! I'm gonna dab all the haters away. That's a Gen Z thing, isn't it? <laughs> Yellow swag. I did it. I dabbed. There you go. We had a team meeting earlier, and we were talking about dabbing. Is it is it learn independent living skills as an adult? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, so Stephanie, um, it covers it covers all independent living in a way where a, a parent could teach this to their children, but your child your child could be any age. You know, your child could be eighteen plus. It makes no difference. This is just di this is just designated and designed so that any any parent of a child of any age can can help this yeah all of these skills are, apl are applicable to adults yeah so everything that we're everything in the course and everything here apart from obviously the school stuff uh, is applicable to to adults as well 100 percent, of course it is yeah good question is it too late to learn independent living skills as an adult absolutely not goodness me you know i started my degree in chemistry um in uh when i was 20 ooh, 28 um or no sorry yeah 28 29 i started my degree in chemistry um and you know it's it, it it's never too late to learn anything especially independent living skills goodness me it's just it's a process of learning it's a process of digesting information that's related to you an aqu aquatic mammal closely related to a seal i look like a seal or the singer seal is from a rose on the bed. Ooh, I'm gonna say I don't actually know the lyrics. I just know it was in was it in Batman? I don't know. Who knows? Where am I? What day is it? Who are you? I don't know. Anyway, guys, it's been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for um for sharing this time with me. Remember, this offer closes in uh, 24 hours. Um, so this is a uh $297 offer. You can get it from the askworld.com forward slash triple A. See you guys in the next live video. It's been amazing. Peace.